Hey guys, this is Tolkien. Welcome to Let's Build the JRPG, I guess. I don't know. We're going to do some more Unity prototyping. We're going to play around some more with some stuff and just keep building. I uh, really enjoyed the stream we did last time. You guys seem to enjoy it as well, so we're coming right back to it. So, where did we leave off? Well, let's get to this thing in a second. Uh, first, let's take a look at what we've got. So, we've got... We're working towards building a Final Fantasy IV style combat system in which characters will eventually take actions. We've got it so that there is a bit of UI set up. We've got the idea of a character. A character makes progress once that character's action bar reaches the end. That character will, well, we have a command menu that appears. Right now it's just a generic button on top of a panel. And when we click that, that character whose action it was goes back to zero uh, on their eight action bar meter and then the next character or the the rest of them continue updating and then i can keep doing this over and over again does not a whole lot at this point but we got some basic structure set up mostly around uh getting some singletons in here we've got a singleton for managing most of the combat stuff and we've got a view manager which is handling most of this updating of the ui um on top of that we've got the canvas set up with obviously most of this um, these elements and then this was just a reference image so this is really what we have here uh, I'm doing pretty good Amorphous how about you you doing all right everything sound okay out there on the other side of the world or on the other side of the screen I don't know is everything sounding good uh, but that's pretty much it we've got some bit of UI set up we've got some meters filling this is all kind of being managed by a couple singletons pretty straightforward um, so what did I want to do? So this may be a bit of a shorter stream. I know the last one went for two hours, but well, we'll see where we get to. But I, one thing I wanted to try was I wanted to play with addressables. Never used this before, but it's basically an asset management system, which I've been wanting to look at. Uh, and I'm grabbing this and I've already pre-installed the preview version. This is not a full release feature. It's something Unity is playing with. And I kind of wanted to just see what the latest stuff coming in the pipe was. Um, but we'll need that for basically bringing in character data. Uh, if we remember last time we set it up so that we are essentially hard coding three character models into this combat system and giving them some random initiatives so the bars don't all fill at the same time, giving a bit more variance to the way that little section looks. So I want to have some of these values like initiative and eventually HP and attack and what moves they even have to all be coming in from design data, um, which I want to have be data driven. So I want to do something like this where we have a zoom in a bit I'll, I'll zoom in a bit on both fronts i know super gamer rob you were mentioning that you'd like to see it zoomed in a bit more it's hard on my eyes to see it all this big but i can understand why it's good for the stream uh, we need to zoom in up here in order to have the zoom in but we essentially want to have uh, a series of these columns and this to be the data that we enter into the game we want to take this in and use spreadsheets to do most of the heavy lifting of data input because inputting all of the data directly through unity can be uh, it's not ideal it's way better if we can modify everything in a spreadsheet and then bring it into unity and import that data so how do we do that and and uh, so honestly it's just easier to add data in here and to be able to look at cell formatted data than it is to find multiple objects and edit them in a scene um, and to be perfectly honest I at this point in my career I spend about 50% of my time on design stuff and 50% on engineering I think it might actually be more accurate to refer to myself as a technical designer and in that I tend to like making design tools like importers because it makes my life easier I get to be lazier at inputting design data, which allows me to get more design work done. Um, so that being said, I know it's a little early considering all we really have is some progress bars and an attack panel. We probably could spend a whole bunch more time actually getting like animating characters and attacking and damage and all that stuff in. But really before I get any of that concepts in here, I think my next step now that we've kind of done something a little flashy here with this thing is to go into data driven stuff so that as I continue to add stuff I have a system to bring that data in via spreadsheets without having to edit it all hard coded magic numbers in the code. Explanation complete? Good. Moving on. Next we're gonna look at um, a good reference for this. So uh, this is a tutorial series I went through a while back. I went through this entire 26 part 
on tactical RPGs by this uh, Liquid Fire. Uh, I messaged... Uh, I. I messaged maybe like a year ago now asking if I could do a video series basically breaking down this entire thing step by step and I like and I got permission honestly all of this code is licensed for do what you want will with basically the MIT license um, but the I, I was given the okay to do it but then I tried to sit down and record it multiple times and I just I don't know something about scripted content I just can't wrap my head around so as much as I wanted to try and do this as a video series I think it's just easier for me to just ramble build um, I don't know it seemed to work before but we may reference some of this stuff because there's some really really good coding practices in these tutorials really good blogs just fantastic haven't looked at any of the other ones but they all seem super great and i think they're all based in unity c sharp mm, maybe not all but anyways uh i wanted to come in here because there is a blog article in which uh it covers importing data and i wanted to grab this chunk of code here probably could write this from scratch but it's just easier to take it in directly and then modify it so we need to make a new file uh, which is going to be our importer which is going to need to be in an editor folder i think if i remember correctly i can't remember if unity has changed this but i think scripts that are editor related need to be in a folder called editor so we're going to try that if it doesn't work we'll see what happens um parsers and then we will make a new script called character parser. Okay. And then let's drop this code in here. Um, it needs to reload the environment. It's probably fine. It seems like it wants to do that every time I modify or add a new script. Okay. Uh... Don't need this nonsense. Honestly, I don't need most of this. Um, I don't need the parser dictionary. I don't need this. All I really want is this function. And I'm going to call this class parser um, character parser. Uh, honestly, sorry, I just saw Amorphous's comment about checking that out. That, that site is really good. I binged that entire RPG tactics series over the course of a week. And I just ended up with a full tactics game and kept building after that. It was just, it's really great. I learned a lot from the, that, that, uh, liquid fire, um, programming tutorials. Okay. So, um, we have character parser. The other piece of logic I need, which I don't remember how to write offhand is, um, Custom Unity Editor Windows. Editor Windows on GUI menu item. Is this what I need? I think this might be what I want. Menu item, blah, 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 on a static class. I want this to be, um, I want this to be a menu item, which is uh, the tools. And this can be character parser. Okay. Uh, we don't want this logic. And we don't want this logic. Okay. Really, I mean, of the code we took, we really stripped it down to like three or four lines, but there are three or four lines I want. So what have I done? I have set it up now so that this function here, which is a static function inside of the class character parser, is set up to be a menu item that this function will be called when this menu item is pressed. And this menu now sh shows up at the top of Unity under a button called character parser. If I click this, it'll run that function, which at this point, that function doesn't do much. But we would want to have application data path. I think this is assets. So we would want to have a folder which is going to be Q 
create folder. Mm, what do we want? Uh, Unity. What are we doing? What are we doing? This is our... <sighs> design data. Raw. Design data. Destination. Files. Sorry, naming can be hard. Um, let's just go with design data TSVs for now. Um, and then this is the folder I want. So I want to have Unity go from application data path, which will be basically the base level of our projects. And then we want to look up the character TSV. I just preference. And then we want to read in file path, design data, character, characters, TSV. Okay. And then for each, uh, let's do int i equal zero. I'm just write out the whole if statement there is a time and or there has been times in my life where I really wish that there was just a hotkey to make a default for loop it's just it I, I know it's not a lot of typing I'm just not the best typer although it's I will say I am somewhat hindered by the fact that the mic is in front of me Let's just debug.log for the time being the, well, not error, just debug.log. So this will print to the console and let's just print out each line of text that we get in. All right, so now we have a function that will try and find character.tsv. If the file doesn't exist, it'll complain but that we're missing the character data at this file path otherwise it'll read it in and then parse through and output it to the console uh, now we're going to for the sake of testing just bring in that data we already had so we're gonna go file download as TSV okay we're gonna go do a quick thing because this is going to make our lives so much easier. We're going to go into Chrome settings. I'll show this after I get to the part I want to be in. Uh, downloads, change. Okay, so we're changing. Uh, I actually don't know offhand where exactly the file structure is. Oh, but I know how to get it. Okay. So we want to go to assets, design data TSV, we're going to set that as the default location. Um, yeah, we're going to set this to be the default location where our downloads go and we're going to ask it to tell to every time we're going to make it ask us where we want to save our file. So we're going to do that in the settings, then when we come back in here. Now when we go file, download as TSV, it'll prompt us and it'll ask to put it in this location. Um, we're going to rename this to characters and then file, download TSV. The file name will now be design data dot character or dash characters because it's the name of the, the spreadsheet slash the tab name. And then we want to grab that and make that what we're actually searching for. Now that we have the idea of what the real name is, that's the file we're trying to read in. We have a file in that location. So we, in theory, should be able to do tools character parse. Uh, that's that weird error that seems to be in the latest version of Unity. And we printed out character name int attack George 10 5 Steve Dave's 15 10 which is the data that we're trying to get in here. Fantastic. Uh, just for the sake of showing stuff, uh, what this looks like 
when we open it in notepad is basically tab delim there's a tab in between each of these things that's what tsd stands for is tab separated values so the these things are just separated each individual part of the cells are separated by tabs um i know it's better but i don't know what else might be open in so i just I, there might be tabs from the last time i used it um so now that we have that, we can now do some parsing, which we're going to go back to uh, just reopening a few tabs. We're going to go back here and take a look at this line. This is what I'm sometimes I don't remember all the syntax. That's really why I grab code from places a lot of times is I'm just trying to find the syntax I'm looking for. And then I believe that it's this backslash and T, which represents the tab character. And this should be that. And then this is elements. And now let's debug. Okay, so now what we've done is we've said, hey, now that take that, that line of text, that line of text being this line here, this line, like for each of these lines of text, I want you to separate them via the tabs. So every time you find a tab, don't read it. Instead, just separate and create another element in this list. Uh, we have to change this from I to J because we can't have another variable called I under underneath this function. Close our braces, our brackets, and then debug.log, log, not log error, Let's read elements J. And if we do this, we can now parse in, as soon as it finishes loading, character parser. We load in the data and now we're getting out character name, int, attack, George 10, 5, Steve Days 15, 10. Woo! Um... So that's cool. Now we can use that to actually put that data into something. Um, first off, let's start with line one, because we don't need the first line. The first line is really just a design tool to help us know what we're actually putting into these columns. Uh, when we look at that inside of here, character, int, name, these are just title datas, but the parser doesn't actually care about those numbers. So we're going to start on index one. So instead we don't see this, uh, these titles. Instead we just get the pure data that we care about. So now we're getting in George 10, five, Steve Davis 15, 10. Great. This is where we're going to need some sort of class to put this all in. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what I want for the class. Yeah, I could just call it class character. I, I think I don't know what all the values I want are for it. I guess I don't need them at this point. Um, but generally, I feel like character model would be the good... Really, this is character design data. The model is the thing that's going to run the design data, but this is the design data for a character. So then a character design data is a class. Uh, reload project because I've added a new file. Save. Yes, please. Don't, don't destroy my character parser logic. I need that. Okay, now we have a character design data. The character design data doesn't need to be a mono behavior. It will never be put into the scene. Mono behavior just means that it can be attached to a game object in Unity. As well as these start and update calls will be called. This does a bunch of stuff, but this thing just needs to be data. It doesn't need to be a mono behavior. It doesn't need all that extra logic. Um...
Oh, it was MP that I didn't know what was in the in that data or in that reference sheet. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Okay, so public string name public uint uh, okay uh, ID so each character will need a unique identifier which we could use the name but it's more efficient to use a integer value for every character I'll generate that in a moment um, public let's go with float m max hp public float initiative all of this is going to change but for the time being let's just get some values in here how does one spell initiative i swear 90 percent of my initiative there we go you just put in random letters until Google tells you what you're trying to spell. Uh, could have went with a nit, but it's somewhat confusing because a nit is also used as initialize in a lot of places. Um, okay. Now, that is a way of doing it, Super Gamer Rob, with the next ID thing. But in reality, it, I might want to reference character design data somewhere else. So I might want to have some sort of key that can be used to reference other design data. So in that case, we might have something like, also, did this stop? When did you stop? Oh, it's not on, it's not on looping. That was the problem. Well, okay, that's back on. Um, The row of the data, again, very programmer focused is it again works, but from a design perspective, designers don't necessarily like numbers as ways of referencing stuff. So I might want the character design data to be like main character uh, underscore one and then another design data. Um, I'm trying to think in this example where this would work, because you might want someone else to reference this character data. Who would want to reference this character data? Oh, uh, you might have a uh, two characters have, I don't know, like I'm trying to think of a good example of this, but I, I can't think of anything better than like you might want to have a certain character need to be in your party in order for you to be able to enter through, say, a door. It's quite literally a gate. And so in that situation, you might have that gate hold the character ID that needs to be in your party in order for you to progress past this this door that you need to go through, in which case that location, the designer would want to write in that this door only opens for character main hero underscore one. Uh, okay, so we have this. So the re but so that would be the reason you'd want to use a, a string. And so what we'll do is we'll hash the string. Um, I guess we can get into that right now. Let's see if I can find. Huh, I don't know if I can find a good... So the reason why not use a number is Imagine that I say to you, hey, there's a bug in which the gate 
is not opening and it goes well who's the gate supposed to open for and I, it says oh it's supposed to be four which character is four like how do i figure out which character that is without having to go into the design data in order to find the character with id four instead i can have a uh, a, a value that can be returned that is like oh it's expecting the character main character underscore four and i go oh i know which character that is um looks like a default value in unity let's just try using that it's probably not great but it might work i might have to upgrade it to a better version at some point uh okay so we have set up character design data we have this character design data we want to now have this go into the parser so we want to make a new character design data And then we want to initialize the values in this character design data using the data that we're getting in from these elements. So we're going to assume element zero is going to be the ID. So we're going to do hash represents a hash value, compute, pass in the string. Never used this before. We'll find out if this works the way I intend it to. <coughs> it does not. It passes out a hash 128 instead of a uint. But I want a uint. For the time being because i can't find the reference i'm looking for and i want to look it up another time we're going to just use that so it returns a hash value that gets put into there i will change this at a later point maybe off screen when i find the piece i want and i'll revisit it at that point all right and then elements one There and there. This is a float. So we need to do float.parse, which is going to parse the string and try and get a float out of it. And then this is also a float, so we want to do a float parse on this string as well. Okay. Now we need to update our design data slightly in order to reflect what we've just changed. So we've essentially added, insert one to the left, delete this column for now, insert one to the left. We have max HP, which is gonna be 200 for this character and 150 for this person. Eventually these should actually be formulas of some kind or like base HP and HP per level or some way of calculating that data as the character in like a Final Fantasy game would level up so they wouldn't have a fixed value for these over time. It would change as they level. And then ID and this can be main character underscore one and main character underscore two. Okay. And then download this as a TSV, replace the old version of it, so it's the exact same name, and then 
we can go back into Unity and we can wait for it to compile. And then once it's done compiling, we can import character parse. Hey, it didn't fail. There was no compile errors. So that put that into the design data. That all worked. Uh, if we want, I haven't shown this yet, but we can debug. We can attach the debugger. Oh, I need to probably change some settings. Oh, really? Interesting that you didn't auto detect Unity as the thing that opened you. Normally when I work with Unity, this is just attach to Unity. Uh, Unity debugger. These are the types of problems we're going to run into, and I could do the All right, we go with no debugging. I think I the the correct answer at this point would be to uninstall Visual Studio 2019, close Unity, uninstall it, reinstall Unity, and then go from there. For the time being, for this stream, we're going to have to go with no debugging. But I'll do that off camera, and then the start of the next stream, I'll let let you know if that was the the final approach. But I think that that it seems like it would be it. Uninstall 2019. Reinstall Unity. All right. So that was a lot of wasted time. Um, maybe I'll just cut that out of the archive video on YouTube. We'll just say, hey, listen, debugging's not working. I'm going to do it off camera. I should be able to do that post. Um, and then this here, I want to be cheeky. I want to see if I can get animator. What are you complaining about? Quick actions slash refactors. doesn't know what animator is. Interesting, interesting. Animi animator may only work in a specific location. Or it helps if I spell correctly. String to hash. And then this needs to be changed back to an int. Cheeky. But I like it. Alright, so now we've got this data being put into um, this data is being put into a class. Then we can take this class and we can I guess ideally right now what we want to do is have a list. So before we start parsing, we'd want to set up a local variable which is going to be a list of character design datas. That character design data is going to be character design data with a lowercase c because that's the convention I tend to use. Local function variables are just lowercase. New list character design data. Why do you set all of these there instead of using a proper constructor? Um, honestly, readability for me. This code is only going to be called at uh, build time or in build moments. It's not going to be something that is going to be added um, or run in re like at runtime during the game experience. And this just makes it a little bit more readable for me because I imagine there could be like 50 different variables that we could add to this thing and that might get a little bit harder to read if that all has to be in one giant constructor. Um, okay, so now we've added that to the design data. Now we need JSON utility. To JSON. Okay, this thing is going to need to take in... Hmm. So 
So at this point, this is where I'd want to output my JSON to a string and then save that string JSON in the data somewhere. Uh, there's something to be said. Why would you like not just um, save the text file, the TSV, and load that in at runtime? Pretty much the parser tends to have some complexity in it and loading to and from JSON is just faster. So basically what we're doing is we're parsing in spreadsheet data as a TSV, kerning that into a class, and then we're going to take that class and we're going to convert it into a JSON, and then we're going to save that JSON somewhere in the project, and then when we load the game up on play, we will look for the character design data JSON, and then uh, load that to be able to have all our character data. Uh, they could totally be ints. I just wrote float. Um, the better optimization would be to change them ints, but we're prototyping, Rob. We are doing things quickly. And I do not have time for type clarifications right now. So we're going to turn this into a string. And then we want file uh, write all. How do we want to do this? Is this going to be write all lines, write all text? Write all lines is going to take an array, isn't it? Yeah, we want write all text. And then we need the path, which we're going to write this to. Um, we'll do application plus basically a similar path location, but we're going to change it. So instead of going to design data TSV, we'll just go to the design data JSON folder. And then this can just be called character design data. Character design data. And it is a JSON file. Okay, and then we comma the one problem is that we need to pass in an object, which means we need to wrap this thing in a higher level. So we're going to do that by doing create a new C sharp class, which is going to be character. This is not ideal, but I'm going to do it this way. Design data holder and then design data holder uh, reload. Let me save character parser, please. Yes. Um, I can start that probably after this stream, Rob. Um, let's see. I don't have the backup of the before the la before I started this stream. I haven't put this in a GitHub yet, so obviously starting from this point forward, I could. Uh, we have character parser. We need character design data. This thing doesn't need to be a mono behavior. It's just going to be data holder. And this is going to hold a list of character design datas, which will be character design data. To be perfectly fair, we don't really need a separate script for this. We could just do this instead and just have two classes in the same file it's a little bit cleaner i don't like this structure i'm going to think on a better way to do this but this is kind of how i'm going to set it up to begin with uh, reload okay so now we have a character design holder so now when we go into character parser this thing here, we don't want to new this. We want to actually make a character design holder. Character design holder. Paste. There we go. Character design holder. Don't need to new it because it's not a list. And then this thing here. Well, I guess we technically should do for safety's sake, we should new the list inside of it. 
because then technically the list hasn't been initialized yet. So we kind of just need to move that logic down one. List of character design datas. Didn't auto generate the word new for me. This needs to be the. Do I need to new this? Am I losing my mind? Didn't think I needed to new this. Apparently I do. Never mind. And then we are now adding our design data to this. Um, so I can generally in unity. I just don't like using constructors to be perfectly blunt, but I can totally set one up because I want to be in full control of when unity initializes everything. I don't want anything really happening without my knowledge, but I can kind of see why you want to do it in this particular case to be perfectly to, to be perfectly frank, most of the time you don't have to do this because you can just, if it's a mono behavior, just new the list on initialize. But for here, I guess we can do it this way. I'm still not, I'm, I think partly I'm, I'm against this mostly because, or I don't think I would normally set this up this way, but I'm kind of struggling right now to think of a better way to do this quickly because I've got to wrap this up soon, sadly. Okay, I think this is going to do it. Don't need this anymore. We're going to need to create a new folder for this to go in, which is going to be design data what did I call it? All caps, Jason. Missing a brace somewhere. Oh, right. Okay. I do need that. Then what are you complaining about? I need this because it gets added to there. What was the error? I was reading too quickly. Oh, I missed a brace down here. Now are you happy? Stop complaining, it's just syntax. Figure it out. Figure it out, Unity, I believe in you. Good, now it's just complaining about some other nonsense that seems to be just a Unity bug in this version. All right, or at least that's what uh, Master Chef said in the last stream. Uh, we've got... I think that's how I pronounce the name. We got that going. That's all going. I was double checking on the location. Yeah, capitals on JSON. All right. So now if we do this, we get a null reference. That's the same null reference that was complaining about before. What did you do? That's not to do with any of my stuff. Oh, there we go. It output it nothing. This is where debugging would really come in handy. Just going to double check to make sure it's actually doing a thing. It very much is. Okay.
We're going to download json.net for Unity. Uh, one second. And we're back. Okay. Um, so it's my understanding that the version of JSON that comes with Unity, that function call I was trying to do, which was JSON utility dot to JSON, is not necessarily a full fledged JSON converter. So we're going to attempt downloading JSON.net, which will give us access to hopefully some better functionality or some more complete functionality. Oh, the import a window appeared on the other monitor. New soft .json .dll. That's really what I'm looking for. I needs it. I needs it because it's gonna make things easier. Because I think what it is is that the Unity JSON converter doesn't work with dictionaries or lists, or something like. I don't know. I was reading up on it earlier today. So we're just going to try getting the better version and see what happens. I had an inkling I might need to upgrade to this. Uh, so that imported into packages. No, that imported into json.net, which made these assemblies. Documentation. Might want to read this. So I think reinstalling, I think we just need to use new JAWS JSON. We need to use this and then I think we can do JSON converter dot serialize object is this the call I'm looking for I believe it is okay and then we'll do the same thing we'll export it as a debug log to see if this actually outputs the data as I was expecting it to do it a moment ago There we go. That was what I was looking for. Um, why is it filling it so many times? Interesting. we don't need to do this. We're for looping through this. I forgot that for loop was there. There we go. That's what we need. That for loop was only there originally just to kind of show the debug log stuff. There. Now we've got what we wanted. Uh, Re-import? There we go. Sometimes Unity doesn't always update these files as quickly as it should. Uh, so this is outputting this in somewhat of an ugly JSON format. If I could, I wouldn't mind changing the settings. Formatting. Formatting dot... Indented? That's parameters settings. 
think if I wanted to make JSON just have to be new JSON settings. What would be the types of... Oh man, there's a ton of formatting that I can do on this. Okay, we don't need all of that. Let's just see what happens if we do indented. Because that might just be what I want. I just want it to be a little bit more human readable. Character parser? Re-import? Yeah, it's that, I can see it in the preview. Okay, that's what I want it. Rad. Super duper rad. Alright, so now we need to do the next part, which is that I want to make this addressable. So this is the new asset management system that I downloaded in the very beginning, which is in preview right now. Uh, so I've just added this thing here to be an addressable object. So I, I've been like, this is a new thing that Unity doesn't have rolled out. In order to be able to get it, you have to go into package manager, then go under show preview packages, and then you have to click on addressables and then you have to install this and then you get access to this new system. But the way that you manage assets in Unity is primarily either by doing uh, direct reference, which is the way we've currently been doing things, which is dragging references to image directly into elements in the scene, in which case Unity will bundle that up for you and send that out kind of with the, the game. So if we look at the character, the character has these fill bars which reference an image, this image will get packaged up and sent off. But sometimes we don't want to directly reference everything because, well, honestly, for design reasons, uh, I would like to be able to have, this is another parameter I forgot about, we might want to have a character uh, texture. And this would be which sprite we want to show. More accurately, it might actually be more, this is actually a way better example of like the ID system I was talking about before. We might want to have a character um, avatar and then that character avatar might be like main character or even frogman one and then or or i don't know the um uh, i was thinking chrono trigger i don't uh yeah you know what frogman one and uh bulky robot and so these avatars would be like what we would load into game in these locations uh, and in those spots we would want to have this data not directly in the game reference somewhere in the same way the character design data is actually a the example we're working on, I guess I should have explained this one, is that we don't want to drag this file directly into one of our objects. Instead, we'd rather make this addressable. And when we make it addressable, we can give it a name. Uh, how do, do I change that here or rename? So I can call this character design data. Now, we can go grab this character design data name we can go into our combat manager. We can go addressables. Uh, do I need to add? Huh. Let's go look up some stuff on addressables. I am not, I've only kind of just been starting to look into this and I haven't actually wrote in any code, written, wrote in, haven't wrote in, haven't wrote in any code on this yet. Um, so getting started, loading addressables, it should be a parameter name. Is there a use we need for it? Using addressables? Nope, still no idea what that is. Huh.
Okay, so I didn't think I needed one because this dock doesn't seem to go into any greater detail. Addressables.load. Address asset reference should also be something that I should be able to use. Is that recognized as a variable name? Does not exist in the current context. Unity addressable assets. That's what we are missing. Okay, addressables dot load assets. Mm, let's see. Let's load asset of type JSON. What would this type of asset be? This is where we're getting into the trial and error as I've not used this enough. I don't think it's a game object. It has to be a class name. I guess text file would probably be the closest. text asset would that be what I'm looking for and then we want to load asset by name so we've just given it a custom name which is character design data double check that I got that name right Naming and misspelling. You're right, I could just try object and see what it gives me back. Let's try text first, though. Okay, and then... This should return a... Text asset, which we will call data it is complaining right this is an asynchronous call okay so the way that we do that is also shown in the document doc complete on load Let's do this fast. So this is an asynchronous call. So unlike everything else I've done so far, the code happens when it happens. This, however, is instead a piece of code that will, will call, and then the next piece of code I'm writing will not actually be finished. You know what, it's gonna be faster just to do it the way they're showing it rather than trying to use lambdas. Plus, I haven't really talked about lambdas at all. Let's just do it the way they showed, which is on load. It doesn't like asynchronous. It's because I need to be... not using private void, private void. Interesting. My asynchronous call does not exist. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so it is asynchronous operation is the action that it's accept expecting. Like that? No overloaded onload matches delegation action.
asynchronous operation handle text asset. Async operations. It doesn't look like it's missing a using. I'm trying to grab their exact code to see if maybe the example doesn't work with the latest prototype version. It does not. It looks like their syntax has changed. Interesting. Asynchronous operation handle. That's not what this is. Operations dot asynchronous operation handle. There we go. Okay, okay. But Unity resource oper async operations dot async operations sprite. There's no matching delegation for async operation game object. It's because this needs to be a game object if it's to work. Okay, that's working. And then load asset of object is obsolete. Okay, alt enter to show me possible changes. <laughs> to add system oper. Okay, so what is the non load assets async? That's probably the new version. They've probably renamed it. Again, this is in a prototype stage and I'm not familiar with it. So there's a little more trial and error to this process than what I've had to do in most of the other stream parts. All right, so we've got that working. Now we've got... Um, that not being what we actually want. So what we, we want is this, with this data, with this being a text asset. Okay, now we're gonna get this function which will give us back an object. And then in this context, it sounds like this object will be the text file. Okay, 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 okay. Sounds like some cool music. I have the music turned really down, down low so it's not overriding me, but I've got it a bit louder than it was before. Chat vanished. Oh yeah, Chrome died. Weird. Yeah, chat's just gone. I don't. I, I I still see it, but it's not showing up in OBS. Moving on. We don't have time for such things. Again, I'm trying to get this done quickly. So we've got an object. Dot. How did they reference it in the actual version? Once they get the object, object.result, that's what we're looking for, object.result. So this is actually, so, all right, so we've now said, all right, do a load asynchronous on grab me this text asset, and when you are finished, call this function. And then when you're, the parameter that gets passed into that function will be the result, or will be an object which contains the result, which is the thing we're looking for which we can grab the text, which is, should be our JSON, and now we can write JSON converter. No, JSON, con oh, I need to use the using new soft JSON. Semicolon, ah, wrong button. There we go, semicolon. 
Now we can write JSON converter, converter dot deserialize object. So take this text object, take its text, and now we can turn it into design data, character design data, holder of character design data and holder name equals this. Uh, technically, I guess I need to define what I'm trying to convert it into, which will be a character design data holder class. And if we are really, really good, we want to take this now and put this down here. Uh, then we want to write a code. We want to write a code. So a lot of this stuff will need to be put into some sort of... Um, some sort of loading manager, but for now we're going to have it handle its own loading internally. So if this thing's loading, don't do any of this. Characters in combat. Same thing. If... Like, ideally, you shouldn't even get to this being available or initialized or doing anything until some of this other stuff is figured out, but I'm just going to do this for now to make sure that we don't run into any errors while this is loading. Anytime we are loading and it's trying to do a thing, just return for the time being. Not ideal, but it will work. Then we can get the character design datas, and then down here we can do for int. I guess for this we could technically do a for each character design data. Uh, character design data in here. I want you to take that character design data and initialize another character model which will have a initiative of this value. Holy smokes. Do we think it's going to work? Do we Does anyone even know what I'm doing anymore? I don't know other than like you Rob, I'm not sure if anyone else is following. This was a, probably a way more complicated concept than I originally thought it would be, but... Okay. That's the weird Unity error. This is doing some weird addressable stuff behind the scenes, but I appreciate it giving me de debug logs. That seemed to work. Um... We have three things. Oh, right. How is this not breaking? Get character for progress for character of index. Oh, right. We wrote code that said if the index is greater than the, the count of combat characters, then just don't do anything. All right. So that's working. Um... 100% that's working. So we now have a way. Let's 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 go through the process. So the whole reason why we did this, we now have the ability to go into our game design folder. We can add another main character, which we can call character three, and we can give him a name, which won't get used in the game because we haven't hooked this up yet, but he can be new character. And then new character can have a max HP of 500 because he's super overpowered and he's going to cost you $75 to buy and he's going to have an attack of 70 and he's going to use the avatar of ultimate ultimate cool guy one because there might be a second one there shouldn't be spaces in any of this there okay and then we're going to go file download Oh, you know what? Just for the sake of kind of showing that things are working, we're going to change this to 1 and this to 100 as well. So that we can see that there's not only is there a new character 
coming in, but like everything else is working. We bring in the character design data. We have updated the speed of these characters. We now go back into Unity. In Unity, we go and do character parse. It will now have parsed the data if we re-import the file. We now see that there's a new character in that design data. We can hit play. Upon hitting play, we have the middle character going really fast and the top character going really slow. And then we now have a third character which is doing things. Ideally, this text should be getting generated based on the number of attacking combat characters. And for even more context, really, this shouldn't be getting put into the attacking combat character stuff. Really, the characters in combat should come from like a combat initialization somewhere. And these character models or this character design data stuff should probably actually exist one level higher in like some sort of like game manager that keeps the characters and then when you walk around on an overworld map and you get a random encounter then this whole system would get generated by like something that initializes the actual combat but for the sake of explaining stuff this is working um yeah i mean this sorry yes this is 100 percent just a, a reference image oh that, sorry, not the whole canvas, but this thing. This was just giving me placement so that I knew where to put some of these um, different panels so that they would line up somewhat closely or close enough for uh, kind of laying this out. But yeah. So we've now got that coming in. Um, we now have design data that's written via a spreadsheet. We can update all this here, import it relatively quickly we go in we download download tsv i mean we can you know this this 100 is too out of it's too crazy this can be 15 and this can be five and then we can go file download tsv replace this file yes and then we come back into unity we stop the project we parse the character information this really should be re-importing immediately. I'm not sure why Unity's lately not been re-importing my files as soon as they get modified, but that's fine. And now this data has updated. So obviously, this has all been like, how long has this been? This has been an hour and 40 minutes, mostly just to get it so that all the stuff we had from the last stream works exactly the same. The main difference being we've now set up an infrastructure. We've gotten a lot of stuff uh, created um, so that the, oh yeah, Rob, sorry, I just saw that fade away, um, that the names and the HP and all that information should be coming in from the spreadsheet. Um, so we would hook that up into the character initialization model. I think the character model doesn't have some of that data yet, like it doesn't have the idea of a name or anything, but ideally that should be being initialized off of this design data as well. That would be the next steps, but we've got it set up so we can do, um, oh, I guess technically chat still isn't showing up for anyone else. You were saying it's major progress. You are right, Rob. It is major progress, but I think that the, um, it looks the same from an outside perspective. It looks like from the end of the last stream to this stream, nothing has changed, but we've done massive amounts of setup so that we can do this for pretty much anything. If we decide to add um, a whole bunch of different attacks, like what if we want to say each character can perform magic and the magic they can perform is fire, water, or lightning, then we can have it so multiple characters could, we would want to set it up so that there's another spreadsheet that has magic types as a type of variable so we would come into here, we go, hey, we want to have abilities essentially in here. And we'd say, hey, we want to have an ability sheet. The abilities have IDs. That way the characters can reference which abilities they own by their ID. So this could be magic one. And then we could have a name. Um, it could have a particle effect that it plays. Uh, it could have a sound effect that we want to look up when it plays. We want to have like some stats for it. So like attack, that type of thing. We call this fire, call this like fire article one. 
whoosh, seven, I'm just making stuff up. And then this could be like attack or power, nine, and then elemental type, fire. We could set this data up in here and then all we would have to do in order to bring this in is we would just need to set up another parser. We would come in, we'd make another one of these parsers. We'd just copy and paste this file, call it, um, doesn't matter, but I'm gonna rename that because I see it. But we would call it like ability parser. We'd copy and paste it. We'd set it all up so that the, the design data for the abilities gets comes in, gets parsed into its individual files. We would come back into Unity and we would just hit parse abilities done like that's i that may not seem huge it was it's pretty huge it's pretty pretty good turns out that's like to be able to have a first template of this that we can just copy and paste a few times as we build design data forward will make everything else so much easier and the game will just kind of build itself based off the design data we can just keep adding more to the spreadsheets to keep creating more game same way with uh encounters we could make a spreadsheet for i'm just rambling ideas now you can leave anytime but i'm pretty much done but we could have an enemy encounter sheet and this could be the enemy sheet and that enemy sheet has um ids and this could be monster one and then we could have another monsters we could have another sheet which is uh rename encounters and then this could have IDs, and then this could be number of monsters, like three, and then it would look at the next three columns, um, monster ID. Didn't mean to hit that hotkey that put me to the end of the spreadsheet. And this could be one, two, and three. This is a design data that you could set up. And then you would have the monsters in here, the monsters images, attacks, stats, all that stuff. And then you could have an encounter sheet that you also import. And every time you have a random encounter, it picks one of these encounters and then generates some monsters based off the IDs you've given it. Um, I don't know if this is making any sense, but This is the type of thing you can do with this type of spreadsheet system. Um, so I could use a, um, a text file instead of a TSV, but one of the things that would be really nice is to be able to do there's formatting I can do where it's monsters a1 is it equals? Spreadsheet. We can do stuff like this. And now instead of, okay, you know what? We're gonna do something real quick because I think this is a really good demonstration and I wanna kind of show it. So we can come into here, we can select all of these monster datas. We can say, hey, we wanna take this and we wanna turn this into a data named range. And we wanna name this range monster 
IDs. Okay, so now that we have monster IDs, we can come into here and we can format this row with data validation. And we can say that this data validation is a list. Uh, oh shoot, how do you do this again? So for this cell range, we want to criteria this by monsters IDs. Yeah, there we go. So now I can come in here and I can make drop downs and I can copy this data formatting to all of these cells. work yeah so now all of these cells are formatted to be this uh, to be looking at the range in the monsters data and then if I try and put in something that isn't a monster so if I try and put in monster 4 it gives me a little error sign because that's invalid data so now not not only have we set it up so that all of this stuff can be brought in via spreadsheets and by via columns which can be color-coded and also set up to be more readable than a text file, but you can also do data validation so that you can say, hey, you're trying to add a monster ID to an encounter that that monster ID doesn't exist. And then this can say, alert us that we've put in some data incorrectly that's gonna break the game. And this can all be brought in as different design data. We would have to obviously go in and set up each of these parsers but it's worth it for being able to have something like this where I can just go, oh, this is gonna be monster one. And this is gonna be monster one again and monster one again. So this encounter one would be three of the same monster. But we can also have an encounter where it's monster two and one of monster one, or it can be monster two and then two of monster three. And then we can kind of make these kind of calls based off of like, if it's a really hard encounter. Maybe it's monster two and monster two because monster two and monster two are really good. Like, I, this just makes it so much easier to start adding all of these things in here. I mean, if you wanted to get really interesting with it, you could even add like things that don't get parsed into the game, but are just design tools so that we could say there is a value that we don't bring into the game, but we call challenge rating. Um, challenge, I don't know how to spell challenge. Difficulty, there we go. Difficulty rating. And we could give each monster a difficult rating of one, two, one. And then on this sheet over here, we could look up all of the monster names here, cross-reference the monster's difficulty rating, and then have a column at the end that's like total difficulty. And it's like, oh, this one would be a three, and this would be a three, and this would be like a four, and this would be a four. And you like cross-referencing this, it would auto-generate the difficulty ratings for each encounter so that we wouldn't have to go and figure that stuff out on our own. We can have it aid our ability to design the game by just, you know, we put in some like, oh, this monster's really hard. We want to make sure that like these encounters never get too difficult for the player at this stage in the game. We want to make sure that the encounter never goes above six or something like that. We could set that up. Again, data validation via spreadsheets. We'll get to all of that stuff in due course, but I think having it just so that we can take data from here and parse it into the game, 100% step one. Now, when we come back next time, we'll probably set up one more sheet, which is going to be the ability sheet or something like that, just to kind of get the idea rolling. And it may not be the final version, but I just want to get something and then have it so that the characters can have different abilities, which are referenced in the ability design data. And then each time one of these characters get to the end of their bar, it will display a different command menu based off of the character who is, who, which character is its turn. Who's Depending on whose turn it is, we'll get different actions available for that character. That's probably the next thing I want to work on. Um, the other big thing that uh, probably... Um, we could separate abilities and magic separately, Rob. I'm so, I don't know why chat's not working anymore. 
I'm so sad that people can't see that, but um, yeah, we'll we'll need to figure out what that architecture looks like, but we'll need to figure out what that architecture looks like. But for the time being, I think this is probably a good point to stop. We'll come back with setting up more actions of some kind. The other, well, it's either that or the other option is we start setting up the characters because right now this is just blank images, but we could set up positions where character avatars could be. We could, and then set those character avatars up as addressables, reference those character addressable names in the spreadsheet, and then load those addressable character assets into the game when we started as well so that we have some characters to represent these progress bars. Those are kind of the two directions we can go with. Rob brings up in chat that flushing out the stats and leveling up system would also be a good next step. It could be, it just depends on whether or not we want to get to the point where we see two characters fighting or whether or not we want to like flush out the back end. I'd rather kind of get to the point where I see two characters fighting to see if I even like where this is going before flushing out systems that if I don't like the combat, then we may never use. So just getting the prototype part up and running first is kind of my top priority. So an action attacks, characters, possibly getting enemies integrated in and then maybe have them start to attack each other back and forth. Some some configuration of that is the highest priority. What order we do those things in, I'm not entirely sure. I must go. So thank you for watching. Uh, it has been a blast. I'm so glad we got all this up and running. Um, and in the next stream, we can move on with actually doing more stuff in Unity and furthering the prototype. Um, for now, though, this is going to be Tolhi signing out. Later, guys.